What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new YouTube video, and today I have coded an evolution simulator that I want to share with all of you. Now, unfortunately, I tried to record my process, but I wasn't able to get all of it, so I'm just going to show you guys the final project. So here's my code. Uh, I coded this on Python using CMU graphics because, I don't know, that's the only uh, graphics library that I know how to use, but I'll be learning some others so I can code some other cool stuff later. Uh, and basically how this works is... Well, let me just run it, and yeah, you can see it here. Uh, this is an evolution simulation. In this simulation, critters will spawn in based on parameters you set. They have two traits, sense and speed, which affect their behavior. Food will spawn on the map, and if they get uh, eat food and gain enough energy, they will reproduce. Every time they move, they lose energy, and if they lose all their energy, they will die. Over time, the most adapted individuals will survive, demonstrating Darwin's theory of natural selection. Press the left arrow key to slow down the simulation and the right one to speed it up. The prey's energy will be visible in the form of their color. As their energy decreases, they will slowly turn red and at maximum energy, they will be green. Sense will be visible as a circle around the critter. The sun wraps around the map and food will only spawn inside the sun. All right. So now that you've got like a kind of sense of how the simulation works and really what I'm trying to demonstrate here, which is like natural selection, let's go through the code itself. So I made a, uh, a class to help me keep track of the praise. Um, this was really tough because I didn't know what a class was before this, so learning this was uh, pretty interesting. Um, here I'm just initializing the class with all of the different variables, and here's my move function. Uh, so to move the critters, what we're basically checking is we're checking to see if their vision, which is a circle, is hitting the food. And if it's hitting the food, then it'll basically just go through every single food, figure out what which food is closest, and then face that food. And then it'll just move speed units uh, here. This one moves it, this line moves its speed units towards that food. Uh, this wraps it around the canvas, and then this one basically um, changes the energy. And self.time is a little thing I implemented. So you can see here I'm multiplying it by the energy loss to um, gradually increase the amount of energy they lose each time to make it harder and harder them, for them to survive as they uh, go, grow older, which kind of simulates the aging process. Um, here I've got uh, the updating color based on the energy, got the wrap function here, the eat food function, just increasing the energy by 40, uh, the die function, which just makes the prey invisible, uh, and then the reproduce function, which creates a new instance of the class prey. Um, you can see here that I have like a 50% chance to mutate, and if it mutates, then it'll basically multiply um, the traits from anywhere from 0.8 to 1.2. Uh, and I did try to implement... Um, a size uh, parameter into the prey, but I never uh, ended up like adding like the natural selection thing to that. But I did add a, uh, I, I never ended up like giving it any functionality or making it selectable or anything like that. Uh, so size for every single prey is like 10. Um, but you guys tell me if you guys think I should add size in, I definitely will. And tell me like what you think size should do. Should like a bigger size, make it so that prey can eat smaller prey, or maybe like, yeah, just tell me what you think size should do, and I'll try to implement it if I think it's interesting. Uh, and yeah, other, yeah, so yeah. Uh, then this is all of the initialization. I'm just initializing a bunch of text, a bunch of like labels so that you can see what's going on in the top left. This is creating the sun. This is like making the initial amount of food. Um, and then this is making the initial praise. Uh, this is updating all of the labels um, so that, you know, uh, the time value is updated, the food value is updated, everything is updated. Uh, this is the function that spawns the new food. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this moves the sun to the right. Uh, and this is the onstep function, which is basically where, you know, I'm putting all my functions into here. This is actually like a CMU built-in function. So the onstep is really useful because... Uh, it's it's a built-in function which makes it easy to control what happens every tick. Uh, and you can see inside my onstep function, I'm basically moving the... Or, uh, first, I'm this is some stuff to help me update the labels. Um, then I'm moving my prey. If the energy is less than zero, then I'm killing the prey. And if the energy is greater than 120, then the prey reproduces. And each food gives uh, the prey like 40 energy. Uh, and then this is just like some more stuff about the labels. Um, and then I'm removing, and for every instance of like the prey class that I make, I'm creating like a list basically to help me keep track of the preys. Uh, and if they die, then I'm just removing the prey from that list. Uh, and then this is like the onstep function. Um, I'm calling the onstep function 
you know, from inside my app. And uh, this is an on key press function that helps me control uh, the tick speed. It basically reads, it, it basically sets the tick speed depending on like the key that you press. So yeah, now that we've gone over all of the code, uh, let's actually run this simulation. So you can see here, if I pull this up, yeah, you can see here that um, I have like a bunch of parameters to make it customizable. Uh, I have a bunch of parameters that like the user can put in. So I'm making the width of the simulation map. Uh, I'm just gonna use all the default values here. Height of the simulation map, the amount of food to begin with, uh, the amount of critters to be, the number of critters to begin with, the initial speed of all of the critters, the initial sense of all of the critters, and the amount of food that spawns each tick inside the sun. All right, and now let's run it. And, whoa, wait, let me try, let me try that again. Let me try that again. Hold on. <laughs> okay. 300. All right. And here's the simulation. You can see the critters move around. Um, it's a little laggy because I am checking for every, every time, like, the vision hits the food, I am checking uh, to see if uh, which food is closest. So um, since I'm using for loops inside for loops, uh, it's exponential um, increase in time for every operation that I add, which uh, can make it a little laggy when there's a lot of food and a lot of prey. But as you can see, uh, the simulation works and the critters are like moving around eating the food and they are actually evolving. As you can see, uh, average sense and average speed both started off at 10, but now the speed has gone down to like what is this 5.5, 5.3, and the sense has gone up to like 16, 17 actually. So in general, whenever I rub this, I find that speed tends to be like a very bad trait. So people try to be, have the lowest speed possible and sense is always really valuable. So people have like the highest sense. Uh, so people try to get the highest sense possible. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the simulation. I think it's really interesting. Um, this is a little slow, uh, or it's a little hard to see like the extent of the evolution. So I'm going to turn, uh, I'm going to make it so that the, uh, uh, on when they reproduce, there's like, they are always going to evolve. So yeah, now that I've set, uh, now that I've made it so that um, the prey will evolve no matter what, uh, or like, you know, have a mutation no matter what, let's see what happens now. Yeah, you can see similar thing starting out, a little bit of lag, but um, speed is still going down and sense is still going up, but we should see it happen a little faster now because, um, you know, the uh, mutation rate is higher. So yeah, and we should be able to also speed the simulation up. Now, my laptop isn't like, obviously it's not, you can't see a distinguishable speed up uh, from here, like above like 120 ticks per second. And that's just because my laptop isn't fast enough to run all of these operations 200 times like a second. So that's just why you can't speed it up anymore. Uh, but yeah, you can see here that the food is only spawning inside the sun. Uh, the critters have the sense radius around them and this guy's, yeah, he's moving around. Yeah. The guys have the sense radius around them. And if food is inside their sense radius, they'll go straight towards like that closest food. Um, but otherwise they'll just drift around randomly like these guys in the middle out here, uh, and they'll eventually die. Uh, you can see now that the speed is now down to like 5, and the sense is up to like 27. So we can see how unvaluable a high speed is, and how valuable um, sense is. Uh, yeah. And let me just show you the uh, function that dictates these, like, th these things. So basically, I'm multiplying speed by uh, size cubed and then I'm adding self and then I'm adding self onto that energy cost and then I'm multiplying that by the time. So that basically means that speed is extremely costly and that kind of explains why speed isn't as valuable. It's because even though you're fast, um, you won't be able to get very far with that speed. So it's, it's just a lot better to have a lower sense. 
Uh, but it's interesting to think about what might happen if I were to change these parameters, or maybe even the uh, rules of, or maybe even like the parameters of the simulation instead of the actual code. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun to play around with this, but that's the simulation. Um, if you guys want me to add anything to the simulation, then please let me know in the comments. And if you guys want to see me code anything else or have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, let me know. And I'll be happy to try to explore more concepts of biology, such as natural selection, and things like that, with the help of code. Anyways, yeah, so that's it for this video. See you guys later.